Hello, Sammy here, back again with another video, and today I'm joined by former Apprentice winner. Sammy, Mark good Clark. to see you. Um, thank you for letting me interview you. Thank you for having me on your show. I saw it on YouTube, I met you at the university, yeah. things seemed to go going well. You're a fellow Man United yeah. supporter, so I thought, why not do an interview? Because you're going to be famous one day. And then when I look back, on, people will look back on your channel and see that I was on here. So isn't that good? Um, possible. <laughs> How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. I, we're in our new offices today, yep. so it's nice to uh, get into some new offices. Uh, it was good to, uh, yeah, be settled in and, and be doing the interview. Um, obviously, the Apprentice final was on last night. Mm -hmm. So how did you find it went? And do you think it was the double winning? Was it deserved? Or Yeah, the, uh, I mean, the Apprentice, um, for me, it just gets better and better. And I love the, what the show produces, some really good business people and it pre presents the right ethos in society. But I, I'm not sure I know about the two winners thing. Yeah. I, I think for me it's kind of like having your birthday on Christmas Day. It's kind yeah. of like all the attention is on two people, not one. And I think if I was one of the winners, I'd be really happy that Lord Sugar invested in me. But I'd kind of be sneakily yeah. a bit upset that it wasn't all, um, all or nothing. I think what Lord Sugar should have done was make one person the winner and say they were the best at the process and invested in two, but only had one winner. But, you know, it's a good change. It's yeah. different to see a different format mm -hmm. for the show. Um, and let's see what they do going forward. Um, moving it to you, mm. uh, you're obviously Australian. Yep. So what made you move from Australia to England? Well, Australia um, is an amazing country and I'll always love it and it'll be my first home. But uh, I, I was um, wanted to see the world, I wanted to travel a lot. Um, and uh, so what I did is when I was uh, 20, um, I decided to go backpacking. And I went backpacking all around the world and the favorite, my favorite yeah. city in the place was London. Yeah. And when I ran out of money and needed to find a job and needed to find work, I went to my favorite city, which was London. Yeah. And it's been amazing for me in terms of career and progression. Um, I love it here and uh, I look forward to, you know, my family one day seeing it all. Um, how did you stumble across The Apprentice? Was it just by accident or was it like, I've seen The Apprentice, I want to be well, pursuing this? Well, it's a funny story. I'd never heard of The Apprentice. I'd never heard of Lord Sugar. I hadn't seen the show. Yeah. Uh, and a good friend of mine, Blake from New Zealand, he was, he was going to try it out. Yeah. And he sent me the application and he said, oh, here's this great show. Well, basically, you run around and do tasks and an old yeah. man yells at you. And I was like, well, it sounds really bad. But um, we, we, we applied, uh, I got in for the applications, and as they say, the rest is history. Um, did you, were you confident that you were gonna win it, like positive, or was it just you wanted to enjoy the experience? I always thought I would win. Yeah. I, I, honestly, and there's not an un, a, a not arrogant way to say that, but I think in business particularly, I never go into anything not thinking I'm gonna do well in, 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 in any aspect of my life. Whenever I go to a run, for a run, I always try and beat my best time. Whenever I come in to work, I try and sell the biggest deal. I think you've got to always be doing bigger things and going for the, the, the next best thing. Otherwise, you just stand still and you yeah. go backwards. So I always thought I was going to win. Uh, I'm glad I won, um, but um, yeah, of course. So was Climb Online something that's been, you, you've been planning it for years or was it just as soon as you got the application, you had this idea and you wanted to no, Climb Online's been a dream I've had for many, many years. I, I worked for multiple digital marketing agencies all around the world and um, they weren't very good. Yeah. And I always say, if you don't get bitter, get better. So instead of complaining about where I was working and saying they should do this, they should do this, I wish this would happen, I just made a business plan for what I thought was the ideal business and Climb Online is my dream business in reality and you know just out here we've got 40 employees across two offices here and it's crazy that yeah. I own it because I dreamed it and I believed I could do it and I just went and did it um, it took years of hard work but it's 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 a reality uh, what was your best moment in The Apprentice apart from winning it like was there one task where you like you really enjoyed it? Or? Well, I'd never been as nervous as the first episode. Yeah. That was the most nervous I've ever been in my whole life. When I meet Little Sugar and you're sitting across the board table, it's so scary. Yeah. The best task was when I, I broke the record for selling to the public. I sold 11 hot tubs yeah. for 31,000 pounds and we won the task. Um, and then, yeah, winning was just crazy. Um, how has Alan Sugar been since uh, 
investing in you? Has he been, has anything surprised you about him or is it just, he's been really supportive? What surprised me about Lord Sugar is his drive and determination. He works so hard, you know, he's 71, 72 now. Um, he's got many, many businesses. He's still doing The Apprentice. Uh, he's billionaire, but he still works like he's broke. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if there's any advice out there for people that wanna make it in business, wanna make money, you need to go in and work every day like it's your first day. And Lord Sugar's still doing that at 70 with billions of pounds. Uh, everyone should be doing the same thing. Is there one, is there, what do you think is the biggest mis misconception it is when it comes to uh, Alan Sugar? Well, I think that a lot of people think that um, he got lucky or he's famous so he gets lots of money, but yeah. behind the scenes is a very honest, hardworking man. And I think that uh, people are always looking for a way to say, oh, that person just got lucky or this person this, or they're in the right place at the right time. But success is no accident and there's no secret. You need a good idea, you need to work hard, and you need to go for a long time. What would you say your proudest achievement is since The Apprentice? My proudest achievement was I was listed on yeah, Forbes, yeah, 30 Forbes under 30. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's very hard to get, uh, yeah. to be listed on Forbes. The Apprentice is great, and yeah. I love The Apprentice, but that is a UK thing. Yeah. To be listed on Forbes at such a young age is an achievement around the world for me. Um, what do you deem as success? What's the ultimate goal? Is it just money or is it maybe like happiness or? The ultimate goal in life, I think, in for success is to be happy. Yeah. It doesn't matter Definitely. if you've got all the money in the world and all the fame and all of this stuff. If you're not happy and you're not healthy, you haven't got anything. So my, my goal is to every day just be happy. And if I'm happy, I'm successful. If I get rich from doing a good business and helping yeah. a lot of customers, fantastic if I build a great business and all of this stuff great but as long as I'm happy and healthy and my family's happy and healthy I don't care about too much else um, what is your what advice would you give to upcoming entrepreneurs maybe trying to get into the apprentice themselves mm -hmm. or maybe struggling I don't know I think the, the, the key thing is with all of this entrepreneurial society and this investment culture we've got at the minute the number one thing that uh, sticks out for me that a lot of people make early on as a mistake is they're not prepared to go to work early and learn something. How I got this business and how I won The Apprentice and how I got going was trying lots of different jobs. I remember I'd worked two or three jobs at a time. Yeah. And I hated most of them. 90% of my jobs I hated. I'd try bartending, hate it. Waiter, hate it. Uh, try car sales, hate it. I've tried so many things then I tried digital marketing and I yeah. loved it and I was good at it. What a lot of people do as a mistake is they pick one job, they don't like it, but they stay at it, which is yeah. crazy. Or they have a good idea for a business and they do nothing about it. I wanted to be in digital marketing. I got into digital marketing. I learned while someone else was paying me to learn. As soon as I knew enough, I created a business plan and I went and did it myself. And that's what everyone should do. Lastly, um, how would you like to be remembered? How would I like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as a as a man who is a good bloke, yep. very honest, hardworking, good bloke that um, created a legacy, that yeah. created a business that will be remembered for yeah. a long time and had a great family. Um, I just want to finish off with some topics and you've got to give me one word answers. One word? Yeah. Okay. One word. All right. Um, Brexit. Disaster. <laughs> Expand on that because... Uh, <laughs> you I, said I, one I, word. Yeah, but... We'll, have, we'll give you one word and then we can expand. Okay. Right, and because I interviewed Ransom Bounce, which is another blogger, and he's, he called it rubbish. So Really? Yeah, so. I think the only people that saying Brexit are good don't own businesses. Yeah. They don't live really in any real world. Um, I, I'm not from this country. I'm yeah. from Australia. So I have an objective opinion. I'm, I'm someone who's been here before with, with, with being in the EU and, and leaving the EU. My experience is this. When we were in European Union and was all going very good, business was booming. The yeah. economy was booming. There's no unemployment. Yes, there's always things that can be better like immigration, the NHS, whatever it might be. But leaving that market that was booming was not the right thing to do. Yeah. And ever since we have left the U European Union or started the process of, of leaving the European Union, 
I've seen housing prices decrease, uh, availability for office rents, um, in inflation go to yeah. a record high, the sterling fall. Um, it's starting to be a hard time. I think we'll go into a recession. I have no doubt about yeah. that. Um, will the country be okay? Of course. The UK is one of the most stable economic places in the world and I would in, in 30 years it will be fine yeah but my opinion on this is why did we do it if it ain't if it's not broke don't fix it yeah. it wasn't a problem everything was going all right and we messed it up and uh, I'm disappointed about brexit but it will work out in the end but for, for now disaster <laughs> moving on uh, political vibe mm. uh, Jeremy Corbyn idiot you don't like Jeremy Corbyn? I cannot stand Jeremy oh, Corbyn. I like Jeremy Corbyn. Do you, you yeah. like him? Oh yeah. my God. Oh my days. So Jeremy Corbyn is, oh, you've got me going on all the, um, all my <laughs> things here. So Jeremy Corbyn is, um, he promises things and to young people yeah. like yourself, my opinion is this. Now, yeah. uh, you have an opinion, I have opinion, somewhere in the middle is maybe the truth, right? He promises things mm -hmm. which cannot be delivered. Yeah. Now, I didn't know this until I got older, that politicians say a lot of bullsh yeah, a lot of yeah, bull, yeah. and um, what happens is they say it, then they get into government, yeah. and then they go, hang on a minute, yeah, I can't yeah, do that, yeah. there's no money, there's no, there's no cash in the drawer. What the Conservative government do, and Mrs May's not, not the best oh, either, sure. okay? Definitely. But, but they're saying things that they can achieve. Jeremy Corbyn's playing at the young audience because they don't know yet what he's saying isn't possible and he's just full of all these fake promises. His, his cabinet is rubbish like Diane Abbott and stuff. I've never seen anyone so incompetent in all of my career in any country. Uh, and if they got into this government, I would leave. Um, I just say, <laughs> I, I just think his morals are different from average. Like in, what, in what way? As in, he's targeted someone like he go. Uh, he did an interview with Copper90. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he I just know. talked about football, and I thought any other politician wouldn't be doing that. And he wouldn't be interacting with you. Yeah, okay, I take, I take your point. Yeah. Um, but he's got a very certain agenda um, about him. I don't like the man. I think he needs a good wash. He needs a nice suit, and he, uh, he, he's not for me. But, for, you know, you, everyone's got to have their opinion. Yeah, Yours might definitely. be wrong. Okay, fine, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's right, but uh, um, yeah, good for you for having right. one. <laughs> uh, Sir Allen. Sir Allen, legend. Legend. Yeah. Legend. He is a hard-working, honest, good businessman, and he gave me a life-changing opportunity. And to finish off, Climb Online. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, it's, we've got a movement here. Um, it's a fantastic business that provides fantastic results for our customers but we care about our staff and we care about our customers and you know a lot of businesses particularly in this country and particularly in London are so driven by money and bottom line and they're not focusing on what they're actually doing and if you're going to create a good mm. business and be remembered you need to create a fantastic product that really does help people and that's what we've done. Thank you for letting me interview you. Thanks for interviewing me. Um, all of Mark's links will be in the li description below. Uh, Twitter links, website, Climb Online, everything will be in the description below. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Um, there'll be more interviews coming soon. Remember to like, comment. Thank you for listening. See ya.